Some years ago, a young child arrived in the city. This young child with no mother, no father, stealing from the shadows just to survive. The young child I speak of, a nine-year-old orphan girl named Erin. Now, Erin relied on her raw wits to get by until she was taken into the House of Blossoms, a rich brothel, to fill the pipes and to clean up after the sordid clientele. Now, the years pass and Erin grows older, but life becomes unpleasant and she flees back to the streets of the city. And it's there that she's discovered by another child of the shadow, another orphan of the city, this one fully grown. The man behind you, Garrett, the master thief. Garrett immediately recognizes something remarkable in this young girl, something of himself. So he takes her under his wing as his protege. Now with Basso, Garrett's old friend and fence, Garrett tries to teach Erin to be like him, to be a master thief. But Erin has her own spirit. And no matter how hard Garrett tries to teach her opportunity to train her to give a technique, the young girl seems unwilling to accept it. And this irritates the master thief. Now Garrett's always regarded killing as an extreme measure, something you should not take lightly. I do not kill without thought or good reason, he would always say. But for Erin, killing comes easily, too easily, almost like a solution to her problems. And Garrett cannot get her to acknowledge her actions, to acknowledge that she could be better. So one fateful last job together, Erin kills once more and Garrett wouldn't take it. After an ugly argument, the pair split, never to steal again. Never again, that is, until a warm summer's evening several years later. Now in a time that people call the Golden Age, it's easy to make good coin. Basso's just landed the biggest job of his career. It's like gold, so much gold and challenge. I need, you know what, Garrett and Erin together. They'll be unstoppable, perfect. I mean, after all this time, they must have sorted out the differences, right? For gold's sake. So Basso conveniently neglects to tell Garrett that Erin will be there. And Garrett unwittingly travels to the rendezvous and is taken aback to find Erin. But in his trademark style, he cloaks his emotions and greets her with guarded curiosity. Now Garrett prides himself on his independence. He's never needed anyone, he's never worked with anyone, he's certainly never trusted anyone. Yet something about Erin fascinates Garrett. And she's matured since he last saw her. Now she has this amazing claw tool that lets her climb to inaccessible places. Although his head says no, Garrett decides to go ahead with the job. Their connection is tense, as is their history, but they proceed amicably. And what a job it is to steal from the Baron himself, Baron Northcrest, to go to Oldale, Northcrest Manor. But it isn't long before Erin jeopardizes the entire heist by unnecessarily killing an unsuspecting guard with the claw tool that she holds. Garrett is furious. After all these years with a dead body on the ground, you still haven't learned your lessons. You're still the killer? With the old wounds rushing back, Garrett makes a choice. Telling himself that it will stop any more unnecessary killing that night, Garrett steals Erin's claw when she's not looking. He continues to watch the young reckless thief as she makes noise, continues to make mistakes until they find a bizarre ritual in the middle of the, the manor. And Garrett watches from the rooftops. No, he says, it's too dangerous. I'm not doing this, not tonight, not with you. You're not ready. But as he tries to call off the job, much to Erin's dismay, the building starts to shake, something is wrong. The, the building starts to collapse and Garrett can only watch in horror as Erin, without the claw that he stole, falls to her death. Garrett falls too and all goes black. When next Garrett awakes and opens his eyes, he's returning to the city on a cart. The rain falling from the sky, this city has changed, the golden age is gone, there's death and oppression on the streets everywhere he looks via the Baron and the Watch. It seems the age of progress comes at the price of the people now. 
and the people, the civilians, restless, desperate for food, for coin, for this bright new future they were promised. They rally and gather behind a large, charismatic man, Orion, the voice of the people. He can give them what the Baron cannot. They are the graven, and their anger is deeply carved. Now, Garrett is confused what happened. He remembers the accident as if it was yesterday. He, he, he still has the claw he took, but he returns to the clock tower, the eerie place that he calls home. It's covered in dust, something's wrong. He goes to see Basso, his old friend, is taken aback to discover he's been away from the city for an entire year. But with this mystery deepening, there's no time. Basso needs Garrett's help. He has an urgent job to steal a ring for good coin. Times are hard, even for thieves. So Garrett, to buy himself time, accepts this job. Now it's just a ring, like any other job before it, right? But no. This is the first step in a series of remarkable events that will see Garrett plunged into conflict as he walks the fine line between politics and the people to reveal a deeper, darker personal secret that threatens to tear his world apart. This is the world of Garrett, and this is your story.